Hey guys, I've been playing with Unreal Engine 5 for some time now, and this is what I got so far. If you want to know more, keep on watching and I explain how I did it. I've been tinkering with Unreal Engine 5 for about 10 months now and I made a couple of cinematics, um, small, you know, prototypes or experiments if you will. But I think um, I'm at a point where I need to finish one single project. And it's not like I'm 100% proficient with Unreal Engine 5, of course I'm not. Um, but the thing is, I kind of lost focus um, on what I actually want to do, and that's making games. So I just want to, you know, narrow down and create this um, game or very small game from start to finish. So why am I making this 3D rolling ball game right now? I actually saw the ball example uh, in Unreal Engine 4 and I decided to bring it to Unreal Engine 5 to you know, make something out of it and use it as a baseline. To be honest with you, I'm kind of hesitant to work with characters because it seems like a lot of hustle. And you know, I tried to. I downloaded MetaHumans, um, I retargeted them and I tried to animate them but for some reason it's never working how it's supposed to. I just can't figure it out so I just said um, let's make it simple and let's make it work. And this is where the Unreal Engine 4 ball template came into play and I started working with it. Um, but the problem was I didn't understand exactly what was going on because I didn't write the code. I mean, I can look at it, but doesn't mean I understand it. And it became kind of like a Frankenstein monster thing um, where I added stuff. And I was wondering why it didn't work or what, what was happening, why all the errors were happening. So in order to understand what was actually happening, why the errors were occurring, um, I decided to start the project from scratch. Luckily, I found a great tutorial on YouTube how to make the basic ball movement. I'm gonna link in the description to it. But the thing is, the tutorial is in Unreal Engine 4 and there are some slight changes uh, that made it kind of difficult to understand but in the end I was so happy that it did work. So now I have the basic movement working and I started thinking what kind of a game could this be and the first thing that came to mind was uh, some sort of a parkour or a obstacle course game where you roll the ball and you have to avoid pitfalls. But on a second thought it seemed kind of generic um, I saw this gameplay with, you know, the rolling ball uh, so many times, so I thought maybe it could be something else. I guess I'm kind of a visual guy, so I try to create interesting visuals first, or at least um, very early on. And I started bringing them into Unreal to interact with the character ball. I decided to create a landscape with some foliage and in combination with the camera, with the depth of field, it creates a very realistic, very cinematic look uh, that I actually very like. And if you want to know how I made the depth of field effect, um, I'm gonna link uh, in the description again a tutorial that was very helpful, that's actually very amazing. After that, I thought my ball character could look more interesting. So I went into Blender and started working with modifiers and I created this, you know, biological organic shape. But it was still not enough. I decided to go back into Blender and make another shape. But luckily I found a great tutorial. Um, I'm gonna link to it in the description again. And it works basically like this, where you push the inner sphere uh, against uh, outer mesh and it simulates inflation. So I ended up with this quite natural, but at the same time, kind of alien looking like sphere and I very much like the result. 
at some point I decided to build those monoliths or um, tombstone looking like things. And this is also the point where I started learning about retopology. Because all the meshes that I was creating with all those subdivision modifiers had over 1 million triangles or something. And even Unreal, um, which is super powerful, had trouble running it with 60 FPS because it was just too much. And this is where um, retopology comes into play, where you you know restructure um, the mesh with um, as less triangles as possible. I mean, <laughs> I still don't know exactly how to do it. I just use the decimate modifier. Some people are asking me to make tutorials on how I do certain stuff, but to be honest with you, I'm learning myself. I'm watching tutorials uh, as you probably do, and um, it makes more sense for me to link to a certain tutorial rather than explaining it myself, because again, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Um, I'm just happy when it works. Although if you want to know more about certain blueprints, for instance, um, how I did them, um, I'll be happy to share it with you, uh, but I am not guaranteeing that it's the most efficient way of doing it uh, because I can I cannot stress enough. I'm not an expert I'm Just following other tutorials and having fun Speaking of blueprints, let's go over into Unreal and have a look at some of the actors and the blueprints themselves so here we are in Unreal and Just a quick thing. I want to mention look at the FPS over here it's almost you know 100 plus something and as soon as we go to those old meshes that I did with over 1 million triangles you can see the frame rate drops significantly just for comparison's sake let's have a look at how many triangles uh, this mesh actually has <laughs> it's 4,161,508. It's uh, <laughs> quite insane. Let's compare it to the mesh of our character. Um, it has two parts, the, um, the outer part and the inner part. Um, I have to have uh, two parts because I need to apply two different um, materials. And you can see the inner part is 98,000 and the outer part is 104,000 triangles. It's not super good, I think. It could be better, but at the moment it works well. Let's have a look at the actual blueprint actor and all other components that are attached to it. We have um, a ball mesh that's inside this ball and the engine uses it to track the movement. We have the outer and inner part uh, I just using it for you know for visuals. Uh, we have a sphere collision or ball collision, a spring arm attached with the camera. Here we go, and um, I have a you know sound component or audio component, Niagara and radial force. But honestly, I'm not sure if they have to be in here or. If I just can call it from inside of the blueprints. Let's have a look at the actual blueprints. So here we have the camera blur or the depth of field effect. Um, here is the player movement. Uh, it basically works like um, no matter the direction you are looking at, if you push forward the player will always go into the direction you're looking at. Uh, same with, you know, backwards, left or right. Uh, this is the camera movement. Uh, this is the particle trail that the ball, the player, leaves behind when it rolls on the ground. And this is where it starts to get unorganized. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is the repulsion force. And this is the attraction force. I have to, you know, tidy it up. This is um, just switching between two materials when I push a button. Um, I have to make it more, you know, <clears throat> fluent. And this is a bunch of trash. Don't mind that. And as I mentioned before, I don't mind sharing the blueprints with you. Um, just ask me if you want to know something specific 
um, and I'd be glad to, you know, help if I can. Just leave a comment below and yeah, let me know. And here are the stones that the player can interact with. Um, I actually don't have to have them in here. I should spawn them at the beginning of the game. But anyway, you can see there are all the same mesh. Those are 50 stones. And um, yeah, I'm setting it, them to a random mesh from um, a list or array of different meshes. And that's how they you know, look all different. And also here is, <laughs> it's again super, um, you know, chaotic. Uh, this is basically the, the sound effects of the stones. Um, yeah, on, on the hit event, they play a bunch of different sounds depending on the velocity. And yeah, this is what I have so far. A rolling ball with a cool looking material that leaves a trail of um, particles behind, makes sound. I can attract the balls, I can repel them, they make sound. Um, the collision works. So far so good. Oh by the way, although I'm using assets for sounds, um, there's one sound that I recorded myself, the actual rolling of the ball, and this is how I did it. Take your BB-8 droid, detach the head, put the body into a ball with sugar, and you roll it around. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was interesting for you. Uh, I hope you could learn something uh, or at least maybe got inspired to make your own project. Please write down in the comments what you think or if you have any suggestions regarding my project or you have some tips for me for Unreal Engine. Uh, yeah, just let me know and uh, see you soon. Bye.